Well, first of all, it all came on the heels of New England losing at home on Thursday night to Kansas City. Right. That was that game in itself because the public all bet the Patriots on the money line parlays laying the eight, eight and a half points. So that was the single biggest game win in the NFL more than any game last year for the Westgate. Okay. As for yesterday, yeah. the big game was Atlanta, Kansas City. Atlanta favored by about six and a half or seven on the road in Chicago. I said Kansas City, Chicago. And that was the biggest one. 85% of the money was on Atlanta. So a big win for the sports books. In fact, it was a big win the entire Sunday and weekend, first week of the NFL for sports books. Because as we know, when point spreads are involved, public likes to bet the favorites. Yep. Early games, underdogs went six and two. So the dogs were barking. And all throughout the day, 10 of the 12 games went under the total. Mm. Public likes to go to Vegas, see things happen, bet the over. Right. When 10 of 12 go under, that's good for the sports books. And Vegas, of course, where you spent a big bulk of your career, yes. uh, has us dialed in here. What stood out to you on the Saturday college slate? So early in the season, it's not, or any week, within a week, we don't see a ton of point spread moves. We saw a five and a half point spread move in the Baylor game. This is a Baylor Bears team, obviously rebuilding just lost to Liberty as a 32-point favorite in the opener. Game two of the season, they face UT San Antonio, and guess what? They lose again. So the Baylor Bears have lost to two schools that I don't know their mascots. <laughs> and the, last week, some odds makers got ahead of the curve, and as 16-point favorites, they were bet all the way down to 11. Wow. And UT San Antonio on the underdog was plus 600 at the beginning of the week, bet all the way down to plus three and a half or so. That's a lot of money. That's a lot Moving of money. That's a lot of money based on books it. got hit on that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, another thing you can uh, bet on in Vegas is the Heisman race. And despite Lamar Jackson winning it last year and coming back to Louisville this season, it was Sam Darnold who was the preseason favorite for the Heisman. Now week two into the college football season, how's it playing out? It's very surprising what's happened because, to your point, Lamar Jackson was not the preseason favorite, largely because it's so hard to win the Heisman Trophy. There's something called voter fatigue. We always look for Heisman voters look for another guy to bet on. And he had six touchdown passes, and he's now the favorite at less than two to one. Really? Which is surprising to me because Louisville's not going to go undefeated. Win-loss record is always kind of hitched to a quarterback. And they, but they lost their final two games of the regular season last year, and he still won the Heisman. Baker Mayfield, five to one, and he's already faced his toughest defense in Ohio State. Big W. So he's not the favorite. So that's kind of surprising to me. And then obviously Sam Darnold still in the picture with USC. Yeah, Baker looked really good against Ohio State in a marquee game. And uh, Lamar Jackson have a chance coming up this weekend in a marquee game against Clemson. But this speaks to what we've talked about with boxing and other stuff is the public's going to bet the underdog regardless. So just let them bet a lower number for Lamar Jackson. There you go.